Hello team, my name is Major Courtney Zimmerman and today we have Captain Christopher O and Captain John Gagne here at the National Training Center. And welcome to the Operations Group NTC TAC Talks. Today, we will be discussing operational, thorough, and patient decontamination, also referred as decon operations. The purpose of decon, as stated in Joint Publications 3-11, is the process of making any person, object, or area safe by destroying, neutralizing, making harmless, or absorbing and removing chemical or biological agents, or by removing radioactive material clinging to or around it. DECON is undertaken to restore combat effectiveness of equipment and personnel as rapidly as possible. I am Captain Christopher O, and I'll be going over operational and thorough DECON. Operational decon allows a unit to remove gross contamination from personnel and equipment and return to an increased operational readiness. Operational decon is conducted by the contaminated unit. Operational decon is a three-step process beginning at the marshalling area. The contaminated element and supporting elements move and meet at the link-up point. The unit is tactically dispersed and personnel at the control point direct movement supervising the preparation of vehicles and movement out of the assembly area. Step one of op decon involves buttoning up the vehicle and equipment. The contaminated unit conducts preparatory actions in the pre-decon marshalling area. The vehicle crews except operators dismount unless they have an operational overpressure system and a uncontaminated interior. The crew ensures vehicles are buttoned up and the driver moves his vehicles to the washdown site. All other dismounted crews and soldiers and the contaminated element moved to the mop gear exchange site. Step two involves washing the vehicle and equipment. Personnel wash equipment from top to bottom, spraying hot soapy water for two to four minutes per vehicle. The decon crew wears a toxicological agent protective apron or wet weather gear over mop gear and the crew monitors for water consumption. Step three involves moving to the assembly area and conducting mop gear exchange. Operators move to mop gear exchange after vehicle has been washed down. The contaminated element conducts mop gear exchange while the decon crew briefs mop gear exchange participants on the procedures. The contaminated unit exchanges mop gear using the buddy team, triple team, or individual method. After completion, the decontaminated units move back to the assembly area after they complete mop gear exchange. Upon completion of operational decon, the decon crew processes through the mop gear exchange site. The crew cleans, marks, and reports the area of contamination using a Seaburn 5 report to higher headquarters and accounts for all personnel and equipment. The leader reports the completion of decon and the location of the vehicle washdown and mop gear exchange decon sites. Next, we'll talk about thorough decon. Thorough decon allows the unit to mitigate effects of a chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear incident by removing or reducing the agent or hazard to negligible severity levels. It's a two-step process involving detailed equipment decontamination, DED, and detailed troop decon, also known as DTD. DED decon element belongs to the Seaburn unit, while the contaminated unit is responsible for DTD. Detailed equipment decon involves five stations. At station one, primary wash is conducted removing gross contamination from the vehicle. This station takes approximately 15 minutes and involves spraying the vehicle for two to three minutes with hot soapy water and scrubbing to remove thickened chemical agents. Although the undersurfaces are difficult to reach, try to remove as much dirt as possible. After scrubbing the vehicle, spray it again for two to three minutes to remove loosened dirt and contamination. This station uses about 250 gallons of water per vehicle. At station two, the decontaminant is applied to the entire vehicle. This station takes approximately 15 minutes and involves the vehicle being divided into four parts and a member of the scrubbing team being assigned to each part. The decontaminant is applied starting at the top of the vehicle and working toward the undercarriage. Every effort is made to apply the decontaminant to the undercarriage, especially if the vehicle has crossed the contaminated area. At station three, the decontaminant is allowed to completely neutralize the chemical agent and the interior of the vehicle is decontaminated. Contact time and interior decon takes approximately 30 minutes. 
While the vehicle is held at the station for the decontaminant to completely react, the driver inspects the interior of the vehicle for liquid contamination. The driver is given chemical agent detector paper to check for chemical contamination. If the service member identifies contamination, they are given decon supplies to decon the interior of the vehicle. Station four is rinse and takes approximately 15 minutes. Decontaminant is removed from the vehicle by spraying the vehicle with water from the top to bottom involving 200 gallons of water per vehicle. Failure to remove all decontaminant from the vehicle may cause a false positive reading at station five. Station five is checked and takes approximately 15 minutes. The vehicle is checked for contamination utilizing joint chemical agent detector, JCAD, to check for presence of vapor from residual liquid contamination. And if significant chemical contamination is found in the vehicle, the vehicle is recycled to station two. If significant radiological contamination is found in the vehicle, it is recycled to station one. Detailed troop decon will be happening simultaneously with DED. As a reminder, DTD is conducted by the contaminated unit. The following depiction on the left side is a complement to the illustration on the right. The left adds a visual representation of a contaminated unit going through a DTD line. It includes the dirty and clean routes and the flow of personnel. Upon arriving to the marshalling area, the contaminated drivers and vehicles will process through the DED while soldiers dismount and process through the DTD lines. The supporting decontamination unit supplies the equipment and supplies that are required to operate the DTD. DTD consists of eight stations, and the DTD supervisor will guide the contaminated unit on manning and processing of DTD. Hi, I'm Captain John Gagne, and I will be going over patient decontamination operations. Patient decontamination is defined as the removal and or neutralization of chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear contaminants from patients prior to entering a medical treatment facility. This should be done under the supervision of medical personnel in order to prevent further injuries during decontamination. ATP 4-02.7 outlines techniques and procedures for health service support in a contaminated environment. Here are some key planning factors for patient decontamination operations. A patient decontamination site, or PDS, established at the battalion level is considered a minimal equipment site. Decontamination should be limited to the contaminated areas of skin rather than a total washdown. The medical equipment set, organic to a Roll 1 medical platoon, can decon and treat up to 60 patients without resupply. Approximately 5 gallons of water per patient is required, so a minimum of 300 gallons of water should be planned for. The decon site should be downhill and downwind away from the medical treatment facility and clean side. The best scenario is to co-locate patient decontamination and detailed troop decontamination DTD sites side by side or in close proximity for easy coordination. This slide is a tool you can use to assist you through planning patient decontamination operations at the battalion and squadron level. We hope you have a better understanding in all three of the decon operations. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our presentation on operational, thorough, and patient decontamination here at Operations Group NTC Tech Talks.